request. And there are no guarantees that we will get it right. It's one of the reasons why we workshop, just like a Broadway show does, an out-of-town tryout that goes on for years. We workshop the piece in order to get it right, in order to gauge human response, in order to present it to a bunch of total strangers, or almost, who have no necessary investment in a successful outcome, and will tell us the truth, whether or not it speaks authentically and engagingly and interestingly to them. And if it doesn't, we have failed. It's a really simple measure. We have failed. We produce opera for human beings. It's not an academic exercise for us. It's for real, people like yourselves. As was mentioned, we will be at Carnegie on November 29th. That's a Friday, and between 7 and 9, we are presenting for the first time ever in concert. No costumes, uh, rather little staging, I gather, piano only. But you will hear the whole show. And if you are willing, we'd like you to stay for an hour afterwards and tell us what you think. And don't waste time on diplomacy, which in all the times I've been to Carnegie rarely happens. <laughs> we're, we're not expecting much diplomacy. <laughs> right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> um, Tobin mentioned that what we have in Margaret's libretto uh, is an, an extraordinary amalgam of the actual voice of Pauline Johnson, the 19th century voice of this amazing Canadian, and Margaret's own 21st century voice. And there are times when you will not be able to tell who is actually speaking. And that's the part of the genius of Margaret Atwood. And it is certainly part of the great gifts that Tobin is bringing to bear to make this possible. To do this, of course, we must then turn our attention to the singers who will create these roles. We are a professional company. We hold auditions. And this year, 53 people came to our auditions. They flew in from as far away as Switzerland and France and Montreal and even Seattle. We had a wonderful range of talent, sufficient to the point that we ended up having two days of auditions, a third day of callbacks, and three sessions with the jury to finally make our choice. As mentioned, we have eight singers, uh, six are women, two are men, and those eight singers take a total of 14 roles. And very white, did I miscount? Oh, I'm sorry, three. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I'm only the conductor, I don't know about these. We had only actually two the today. Tenor but was six. That's eight. right, the so tenor was six. Seven. Sorry. <laughs> so we held auditions. And we are looking for, as Norma has emphasized, absolutely correctly, people who know how to create a human being on stage, not merely going, ooh, 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 what a beautiful sound is this, but Pay attention now, I have something to say that you must hear, and I will know by looking at your faces if you have heard me. Pay attention. Actors do this and know how to do it. I've been asked a number of times by people, meant very well, why did you choose as a director someone who has never before directed an opera? And our answer is simple and truthful. One of the problems in my business, and I've been doing opera for 30 years, is cliché. Cliché poisons the well. It reinforces awful stereotypes about enormously fat women wearing horns and allegedly dying of you know, tuberculosis, weighing 428 pounds. There's no horns? There will be. The French horns. Yeah. Our, our, our. So we, we, we're thrilled that Norman has accepted this assignment because we want that absolutely fresh impulse that he will bring to creating theater through music for you. But we have to choose the right singers. I'm so pleased to be able to introduce you now to Rose Ellen Nichols, who is creating for the first time in the world the role of Pauline Johnson herself. And I wonder if Rose could tell us a bit about her own journey as a singer how you got to where you are, how you came to us. The first time we heard you was when you auditioned for Emperor Palantas, wasn't it? Right. And, and we, so we heard Rose at one of our very early productions, an amazing opera that was written in a Nazi camp called The Emperor of Atlantis, Der Kaiser von Atlantis. When the SS finally figured out what the opera was all about, uh, they rounded up the entire cast and they killed them all. 
except for two kids, one of whom became my teacher 30 years later. For real. We, we were not able to find a role for Rose Ellen when we did Emperor of Atlantis, but boy are we glad she came back. Ladies and gentlemen, the woman who is creating the role of Pauline Johnson, Rose Ellen Nichols. <laughs>